Welcome to the Databricks Skill Builder Series. We're glad you're here. Hello, welcome everyone to this Databricks Skill Builder session on Databricks Asset Bundles. I'm Ashley Johnson, Solutions Architect at Databricks. Today I'll be giving a high level overview of what Asset Bundles is exactly, and we'll go through a brief demo to see it in action. So let's get started. First, let's take a quick look at a few different ways that historically users have been able to productionalize projects on Databricks. You may have used something like Terraform, DBX, or maybe even the REST APIs. Each of these have their own drawbacks, though, as noted here. Terraform tends to have a steeper learning curve. DBX isn't officially supported. And the REST APIs can also be a little tougher to program around and aren't the recommended way to productionalize a project on Databricks. So knowing that, now let's take a quick look at what are the recommended ways to develop projects on Databricks moving forward. So Terraform would certainly continue to be the recommended way to deploy and manage infrastructure. It can also be used to manage workflows too if you're already familiar with Terraform, but we're gonna recommend asset bundles as you'll see coming up. SDKs are the recommended tool for application development. Go, we have Go, Python, and Java SDKs, and you can find more information and examples on our website about how these work. But for workflow and project deployment, including CI/CD, you can use the Databricks command line interface in combination with asset bundles, which is what we'll look at today. Just to note, the REST APIs won't be going anywhere. It's just that Databricks recommends using the CLI or SDK first. So what is asset bundles? A bundle is just a collection of source files that make up a complete data analytics or ML project. These source files include information about how the bundle is to be tested and deployed. This bundling and defining of source files that make up a project makes it simple to apply data engineering best practices like source control, code review, testing, and CI/CD. So you would typically create a bundle on a local development machine with an IDE, something like VS Code, and the Databricks CLI. With an IDE and a CLI, you can create, validate, deploy, and run a bundle. So let's take a look at how bundles might be used as part of both a development and a CI CD process. So in this scenario, Alice is a data professional. She's working on her project in an IDE from the terminal, and she's made some changes that she wants to quickly test. So using the Databricks CLI, she can easily deploy her bundle to her dev workspace. See the deploy command here. Once her code's deployed, she can then run her code from the same command line in the remote workspace. So she can use this to quickly iterate or compare different types of configurations to each other from her local IDE. It's also helpful when she wants to see how code behaves in different workspaces. But what about going to production? In this example, we see, we see asset bundles as part of a CI CD process. Bundle commands are executed on a CI CD server like GitHub Actions. And in our example diagram here, when a pull request is approved, our bundles deployed to staging as a test by our action in GitHub. And if all tests are passed, a release branch can be cut, which triggers another deploy to production by an action. Just a quick look at what's typically included in a bundle. Source files like notebooks and Python files, config files to find Databricks resources like jobs, Delta Live Tables pipeline, model serving endpoints, MLflow experiments, and MLflow registered models, and information about which workspace or workspaces the bundle is to be deployed. And then for CI/CD, you would include other files like unit tests or integration tests. So why would you use asset bundles? Again, bundles makes it possible to create end-to-end -end data analytics and ML projects as source code. And this is important because it allows you to implement best practice tools and processes for working with source code like source control and history, code reviews, testing, and it streamlines local development. Bundles works well in the Databricks extension for VS Code. And then there's the automation aspect. You can eliminate manual deployment and validation processes that can be time consuming and error prone. So now that we've seen a high level introduction of asset bundles, let's see it in action. Okay, so here we are in VS Code on my local machine. By the way, you need the CLI installed and you need version .205 or above Anything below that is referred to as the legacy CLI and doesn't support asset bundles. 
but for the sake of time, I've already completed this step. If you're starting from scratch, you can issue an init command with bundles to generate a starting template that will create some files you need to get started. But in this example, and again, for the sake of time, I already have a code base loaded in VS Code. Our goal with this code is to analyze some Medium articles. I won't dive too deep into the code, but it's important to note our project will produce two basic outputs, a Delta Live Tables pipeline and a notebook with a bar graph of authors of some Medium articles. The ingest Python script is where our DLT tables are defined. We have two tables here, medium raw, which is the result of ingesting a CSV file, and medium clean, where we remove nulls and clean up the author name from our raw table. If we look at our get metrics Python script, we can see a Spark UDF for gathering metrics about our articles and another to scrape medium. Lastly, we have this FE medium report script for creating our gold table, where we use Plotly to create our visual. Again, no need to get too much into the weeds here. Just know that we're building a typical ingest pipeline with DLT plus a chart, just as you might do in the workspace in a notebook. Now let's see how we can use asset bundles to package this pipeline to deploy and run in workspaces. It starts with this bundle YAML file, where a lot of basic configurations can be found. We define the default workspace, define our resources, including our DLT pipeline, and our workflows, in this case, a job, with two tasks, the DLT pipeline and our notebook containing our report or our bar chart. And lastly, we see the configuration of our environments. In this case, a dev, QA, and a prod. Notice the different configuration between environments, such as setting our development flag to true for dev environment and false for prod, and then using options like uh, Photon in our production environment. By the way, you'll notice I'm using the same workspace for dev, QA, and prod in this scenario more real world, you would be using separate workspaces, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm just using them all and labeling them dev, QA, and prod. So now that we've reviewed the configuration, let's try it out. In this scenario, we're a developer doing some ad hoc development and we need to deploy and run our code in our dev workspace. From the terminal, we'll issue a Databricks deploy or Databricks bundle deploy command to deploy our bundle to our dev workspace. Once deployed, we can run our, we can run our job with the run command. If we open up our workspace, do a refresh, we can see our job that was deployed. If we click on it, we can see it executing. And now that our job is finished, we can view our Delta Live tables pipeline and see our three tables created. We can also take a peek at our notebook and see our report. No bar graphs of medium articles. Flip back over to our VS code and see that our run has completed. So remembering back to our slides, that's an example of ad hoc development using asset bundles. Now let's take a look at how we might use it in a CICD framework. 
Okay, so I've created a feature branch. We'll check out that feature branch now. We'll make a change. I'm just going to change a simple. Description field. Okay, commit. Next branch. And push that to my remote repo. If we take a look at our remote repo. Or a pull request. And create my pull request. Here we'll see the actions kick in while we're waiting on that. Flip back really quickly to the workspace, show you these two YAML files that are deploying the actions that are kicking in in GitHub in our repo. Okay, so here we see those actions kicking in on our pull requests. Deploy pipeline and then run the pipeline both in our QA environment. And with our action completed, we just flip over to our QA workspace and see our assets deployed and executed in the same way we saw for development earlier. So lastly, we go back to our pull request. Since all checks have been passed, we merge. And we'll have those checks kick in, which will deploy and run our assets in our production environment. Flip over to our workspace. We will eventually see our production deployment. Here we are, and it's running. In our production environment. We'll click on the previously executed version of this, we'll see the same, same assets. So these assets, remember, were deployed and run programmatically using our actions in GitHub as a result of a pull request and a merge of our code. So that's the end of our demo. We saw how to use asset bundles in both an ad hoc development fashion to run a project, tweak configs, and quickly test changes. We also looked at how to use asset bundles for CI CD for programmatically pushing our code through a typical dev process in combination with GitHub Actions. 
Hopefully this helps to understand how asset bundles can help you implement best practices, streamline local development, and help to automate workloads. If you have any questions, reach out to your Databricks account team or see our documentation site for more information. Thanks for watching.